Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. How are you all today? Okay. We all had our lunch. <coughs> mm. So, uh, so uh, just now when we were doing sitting, uh, yeah. So uh, we don't try. We don't try the to keep still. Uh, sometimes it's. Uh, it's a, a matter of uh, getting used to it. So, from a young age, yeah, after we are able to command our limbs to move around, uh, when we are awake, we seldom sit still. Yeah, we seldom do that. So we tend to move around. So, but is it wrong to move around? Yeah, nothing that wrong to move around. So, but uh, when we do meditation, we try not to move around. Mm. So, when we try not to move around, then we sometimes end up st stiffing up also, stiffening up. Yeah. But if you do that, then uh, you end up uh, feeling uncomfortable also. So, uh, to remain still without stiffening up your body. And then to be relaxed, uh, but not snouching. Yeah. If you are too relaxed, then you... <sighs> so, uh, this is like a balance. Yeah. A balance between the extremes, extremes of over tightness, uh, over effort, and under effort. Yeah, so just try to. Uh, because when you are leaning against the wall, you are not putting in effort at all. That's under effort. So you agree that it's under effort. Yeah. So then we're trying to avoid the two extremes. It's easier to be comfortable, I agree. Uh, but that's not meditation anymore. Lying down on a couch is also easier to be comfortable. <laughs> there are many ways to be comfortable, really. Yeah. Uh, well, Of course, it's okay. La. <laughs> you're attending my class. La. I'm not attending your class. La. Of course, you have to do according to the way I teach you. La. Yeah. <laughs> and you are not meditating to begin with. You are with your eyes open looking around. I mean, not now that you mentioned. So don't sit that way. Face for, face, at least face me or face the front. Yeah. The, our physical body is an expression of our mental state. Yeah. If you think about this, yeah. if you go for an interview, would you sit at the, on the chair, lying against the chair like that? Yeah. If you are the interviewer and you interview a, a series of candidates, and some of them sit upright, you know, in fact, some of them even lean forward, eager to engage you, and some of them sit back like that, 
or even choose to put the chair to the wall and lean against the wall, who would you hire? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but we're not necessarily stuck with a certain mode of uh, posture as well. So there are different posture in the Buddhist meditative practice. Yeah. Uh, important thing is I've I've mentioned this so many times. The cooking class example. If you go to a cooking class, yeah, and the and the class is teaching you to fry an egg. Yeah, and if you go to the class bringing your own method and you choose to cook your own method then you don't have to attend the cooking class because in fact you will not benefit from the cooking class you're not learning anything new you are there to try your own method <laughs> yeah. now I'm not so uh, how do I put it uh, I, I'm, I'm not so dictatorial uh, in this also, yeah. So I don't say that. Oh, when you go back home, you must do this. You must do that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one very direct way to benefit from a class is to at least try out the method. Yeah. And given that the method is not something that is for cook up. Yeah. It is something that has been taught uh, by the Buddha and fine-tune and, and, you know, develop thoroughly over the centuries uh, in the various traditions. In no tradition is there such instructions, lean against the wall, and, <laughs> yeah, and then there he was, bhikkhu or ver uh, venerable uh, XYZ, Leaning against the wall, he attained arahanhood. Yeah. Now there are instances where uh, individuals had breakthroughs in various uh, posture as well. Yeah. Uh, I've shared before in the Theragata Terigata uh, Sutta, uh, there are those who, when they go on arms round, one of them, one of the nun, as she left the compound, she turned. And then she trip. <laughs> she trip. Yeah. And just before she landed, she attained arahanhood. Does it mean that all of us should go and try to trip? The fact that she attained arahanhood in the in the course of that few seconds from walking to falling down, it's not because of the falling down that there is yeah, that is not a practice by itself. Yeah. Uh, but still, I say, uh, if you come for the for SGC or meditation class, then you should do what has been taught. Uh. Yeah. And again, can you face the front? Uh, what's his name? Uh? Huh? When you have can you turn your body? Yeah. So, uh, the reason why I insist on this is, you know that, do you know when you go to some restaurants, most restaurants don't let you bring outside food? Do you know why? Do you know why they don't let you bring outside food? Now, a most obvious reason most of us think of is, of course, they don't want you to bring outside food, ma, they are selling food, conflict of interest. Uh, but even more importantly, is because uh, if you bring outside food and consume there, and then you consume some of their food and you have stomach ache, they cannot isolate whose food gave you a stomach ache. They will be liable. So when you come for my class, you must meditate my way. <laughs> Otherwise, later you, you know, four, four o'clock downstairs, you go, go key cell. <laughs> then be, all people know is, don't know, this guy just came from upstairs. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
this lady just came from upstairs. Just now I heard them chanting, then come down, then see already. <laughs> and I'll tell you, uh, uh, I have heard, I have encountered cases. Uh, students referred somebody to me and uh, they went for some retreat in some nearby country. And when they were there, they, I don't know whether they tried the method but they encountered problem, didn't inform the teacher, the teacher didn't know, so after that they left, then came back, and then, you know, getting the person start to have hallucination, paranoia and stuff. Yeah, so my first thing was, did you all inform the teacher, the instructor? I said, no. Then, well, it's not fair to that teacher because you first, at the first point, you should inform. Yeah so that the teacher can make corrections. And now the teacher making corrections, do what? I see my way. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and it's not up to you, okay? You cannot say, no, no, I'll be accountable myself. Cannot, cannot. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you, you can come and sit here, then you teach them to sit. <laughs> Well, then all, all of you, yay, we can sit, lean against the wall. Yeah. But a bit more about that later. Uh, uh, a, a lot of this has to do with our mindset and attitude. Yeah. Uh, in the Zen tradition, there's this story about, not a story, it's an, a real life account. There's this monk uh, in the Chinese Mahana tradition. It is, uh, it is common for the monks, when they, when they ordain, they will learn under their teacher first for a couple of years. Then after a certain number of years, then uh, the teacher may send them out to different mountains to learn under different masters. We call it Tan Xue. Uh, tan Xue. That means uh, learning, visiting. That means you visit the different centers and learn you know, as a resident monk over there. So then it is said that there's this one, uh, one monk went to one center, then, then one day, so, oh no, in fact, right at the start, went there, and then sit down. Uh, I think he started sharing oh, everything, that, oh, this idea, that idea. The, then the master started pouring tea. Uh, like, come, we drink tea. Some of you all have come to, to see me before and then make you drink tea. And the master pour. Pour, 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 pour. Pour until the, the cup is full and continue pouring and, and it overflows. Yeah. Then the visiting monk was like, hey, stop, 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 stop. Then the master stopped. And the master asked, why stop? Then the monk said, if you continue pouring, it's really overflow. It's overflowing, it's full already. You cannot take any more tea. And the master said, Indeed. If you don't empty your mind of your own ideas, how are you going to come here and learn? Yeah. Now, to be fair, I was like that. <laughs> so I'm not here to criticize your heart or anyone in particular. But I was like that. When I went to Myanmar in 2008, oh, 10. 2007 actually, 2007, 11 years ago. Uh, I have learned and trained under, for a number of years under my teacher uh, and in a monastery in the in US. So I went to Myanmar. Uh, as I attended the, 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 uh, the uh, briefing, the training, and I went for sitting, a part of me was well, comparing the different techniques the different technique that was taught by the Sarador versus what I was taught versus what I learned last time in Singapore. Wow. Then when I have an opportunity to meet another, uh, another monk from our own tradition, from Malaysia, wow. then I discuss with him, hey, if Asu, what do you think about this tradition? Until one day, he very kindly told me, he said, do you find that you've been spending our time comparing the different approaches and the different can I and he said to uh, 
that he, he give me a suggestion. He don't even say, oh, you should not do this. He's actually much more senior than me. But I guess it comes with that years of experience. So he told me uh, that he suggested, if you want to benefit from your retreat here, put aside everything you have learned. Not forget, uh, just put it aside first. And when you are here, whatever the Sayadaw asks you to do, uh, retain it and do accordingly. Just do, just do it. Don't go and think, does it make sense? Is it like this? How about the one that I have? No, don't do that. Don't waste your time, he said. Because he said, if you are going to do that, you will only try it half-heartedly. Yeah. Because I live here for three months, right? three months rains retreat. Yeah. And of course, if the Sayadaw asks you to jump off the building, then you don't jump. Lah. <laughs> yeah, if Sifu say, no, today we're going to do a special meditation. It's called jumping meditation. Open the window, jump off. Uh, then you better don't jump. Okay. Yeah. So he said, in these three months, whatever technique you have been taught, take the opportunity to learn. Just come here and learn. You are here to learn, ma? <laughs> then just learn. And, and try out the technique. Because if you don't try out, how, how do you know? You are just thinking about the technique. You are just postulating. You are just you know, having an, a mental analysis. You are not doing it. And he said, after you do it, you, then you know what is the outcome. And you must do it over a period of time to be sure what the outcome is. You know, things like that. Then... He concluded saying, and after the three months retreat, uh, you have mastered at least some of the technique, part of the technique. Uh, when you go back, ah, then you can take your time, go and do comparison, analysis, all you want. Yeah. In fact, the Sayonda, there was one, uh, happened to be a lady, one student, she was, I think, from... Hong Kong, yeah, uh, Chinese also. So uh, apparently, for several days, she just refused to use that technique. Just kept on using their own technique, because the Sayadaw will ask, "So, what is your progress? What what is the technique you are using? What do you observe?" You know. So after a few days, the Sayadaw told her off, asked her, "We did force you to come, right?" You buy your own ticket, you take your own leave, you choose to come here. And now you don't want to use our technique. You want to use your own technique. We didn't we, we are not providing this place for you to do your own practice. You come here to learn the Mahasi method. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so if you when you Do you know how many times I must tell you before you will sit properly? Yeah. Cannot even sit properly. If you want to do your own meditation, you can do it at home. One whole week, only Sunday, only that 15 minutes. You think about it. Be fair to yourself. Don't come here, waste your time, and then later on, think to yourself, didn't benefit from... It's not actually I'm concerned. What I'm more concerned is people who come to Buddhism, not just SGC, and then come up with their own method. Don't just refuse ego, no. Pride. Refuse to give up your own idea and thinking. And the best thing is, it's baseless. If you, if you, if now you can float in the air, you know, then you can say, but so far, I tried my method. Although I tried three months, I can float in the air already. Can you float or not? Yeah, I don't have wisdom, but I have jhana already. Okay, then we can talk, you know. <laughs> yeah, then we can talk. I've seen so many people, they come to Buddhism. Meditation, they want to learn properly. Dharma, they want to learn properly. Then after that, leave. 
and then say, oh, actually, it didn't really help me. Of course, it cannot help you. Uh. <laughs> Imagine you go to a doctor, the doctor gives you medicine, tell you to cut down your diet. You don't do any of that. You do, still do your own method. Then after that, Western medicine doesn't work. <laughs> How to work? <laughs> How to work. And we are talking about just once a week. 15 minutes. Even that 15 minutes, if we... You know, some people ask me, what's the point of doing chanting? What is the point of this practice, that practice? Actually, a lot of the Buddhist practice starts with quelling your ego. Why is it that chanting must be done together? Do you notice that when we do Pali chanting, there's always one guy who always trail everybody? Samadhi yami. People stop, still don't stop. This ego. Sifu so, chanting is not perfect, but it's modeled after the Sri Lankan chanting over here. When I'm chanting in Bhante, I will synchronize my, my speed, my tempo, and the tone with him. And this is a very direct practice, no? To give up your own, my own idea. Yeah, this, this is a very, in a way, subtle, but in a way, a very direct expression of our ego and pride, conceit. My, my idea, my idea is the best. I'm correct. Yeah, if we come to Buddhism with this mindset, hard to, hard to progress, hard to learn, not to mention progress. Okay. Let's see, on my left, who is new here today? Uh, anybody who is new, to ah. Although the Buddha is behind the screen. <laughs> uh, there are some of them who are new. <笑><笑><笑> Uh, let me see. I think today all the left side are all the season parking holder. On my right, mm. front. Okay. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hey, it's okay if you want to stand. Hello. Yeah. Oh, my name is Serene. Hello. I came here with my sister and my parents. Ah. Who is your sister? Tracy. Ah. Very good. Welcome. And who is next to you? Uh, pass it to her. She looks old enough to hold the mic. <laughs> what is your name? Cassandra. Cassandra. And uh, how old are you? Nineteen. Nineteen years old. Oh, you look younger than nineteen, huh? Oh, you look like sec four or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, huh? S sorry. Came with my aunt. Came with your aunt. And grandparents. And grandparents. Where are your grandparents? Uh, come. I introduce yourself. Uh, oh. Uh, Hua 多数都是你知道了 待会我会给你们稍微解释一下
，好不好？啊，那呃，我华语 OK 吗？你们你你是什么籍贯的人？啊，潮州。潮州人嘿。啊，潮州人。哦，我妈妈潮州人。<笑>但是我潮州话讲一几啊句尔啦，讲<笑>个几啊句，你来爱笑了。<笑>呃，爸爸，呃 ，OK，Welcome，Welcome。呃 ，any anybody else who is new here today? I think that's it, ah.、Huh? Yeah. So, uh, 有没有把你们吓着啊？<笑>哇，第一次来这边，这个师傅这么凶啊！<笑> yeah. Uh. 以前哦、oh, ，come now suddenly Chinese 啊<笑> ，Mandarin。So in the past, my mom and dad they would tell me, uh, that in when I'm giving talks, 师傅 ，don't smile so much， <笑>不庄严。Uh, traditionally, you know, the the when the monks are giving talks, cannot smile。各位居士，今天。我们非常高兴能够一起来学习佛法。首先，我们谈谈今天的话题的因缘。No small one, no. Wow, you can go two hour that, and you cannot just like that raise hand want to talk. Uh, you raise everybody will turn around and look at you. It's like, wow, something nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but most people seldom see me. Uh. Uh, how do I put it? Do you feel like I was scolding you all just now? No lah. Maybe a bit sterner than usual. Ah,、uh, so this is the thing. Oh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Yeah. Yes. No. 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 Don't pass him the mic. I don't want to pass him the mic. <laughs> So,、uh, you see, if a person just laugh, laugh every day, the person is a clown.、Uh, if a person any anything goes,、uh, then this person is、uh, is not easy going. If this person anything also can, this person has no principle. If this person everything is also a principle, this person is not principle. This person is difficult. <laughs> yeah, there are some things that we can okay. Some things because today is not the first time I observe. Yeah, and I've been thinking, cannot lah. You know, every week come here, then sit down there, and then look around, look around. <laughs> so, never mind. So welcome to S G C.、Uh, usually you won't get this. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes it's、uh, it's an opportunity. Yes. Can I ask a question about the meditation? Oh,、uh, okay. Let me just do the preamble first. Ah,、huh? so、uh, S G C. Yeah, welcome to S G C, where we have short chanting, short meditation, and not so short、uh, dharma. Yeah. So as mentioned earlier. The class is in English. Yeah, there's only a bit of Chinese in the chanting and the dedication. Yeah, because we don't want to be totally kantang also. We don't want to be totally divorced from the the Chinese Mahana lineage. Yeah, because within the Chinese Mahana lineage, there's this wealth of wisdom, a very rich、uh, tradition uh, with with、uh, with the the lineage dating back. All the way to the Buddha's time.、Oh. So、uh, today's topic is actually on living with anger. But before that, maybe you want to ask a question first. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. And then I regain my concentration on my breathing. But the question is that if I didn't awake, yeah, how do I 
get that portion out because I'll end up sleeping. Uh. So my question is that how do we get ourselves awake from that point uh. and then we not allow ourselves because our mind actually went into a sleep mode. Uh. And then this is why we start to sleep. But it took me some time to pull myself up from that sleep mode and then like, oh, I'm sleeping. Uh. So I came back again and started doing my breathing, constant breathing. Then it's a, but my question is how do we get that portion? Yes, good. So, um, first off, how many of you doze off? Don't be shy, lah. Huh? All of them. Uh, actually, a lot. Of, uh, yeah. But the reason why not many people raise their hand is not because they are embarrassed, but sometimes we don't even know. And sometimes, uh, we, we must know that it's actually a whole spectrum from being wakeful to full-blown sleep, yeah, where you even start to have dreams. And the worst is when you're sitting, right, and then you start to dream about sitting. <laughs> so so in, your, in your sleep dream, you're dreaming about sitting meditation. Yeah. Then, you, then, yes, it's very hard to get out because you really think you're having a good sitting, you know. <laughs> Until suddenly, eh? <laughs> so uh, from these two... Uh, these two, in between these two is a whole spectrum where um, there are some parts which you are not totally asleep. You are just drowsy. Yeah? So, in between, there are some parts where the mind is a bit unclear. There are some parts where the mind is, uh, is on and off clear. Yeah? So, um, if you fall into the sleep part, uh, maybe you are really tired. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I want to tell you the first thing about sleep. If you manage to sleep during meditation, good for you. At least you got some something <laughs> out of it. <laughs> now, um, sounds like a joke, but it's actually um, crucial that you must find some enjoyment from the sitting. So, before you get jhana, I'm not suggesting, then I just... <laughs> <laughs> the aim is not bad, but my point is, a lot of people feel very bad as a result, and they may even give up sitting. So I want to encourage you, and the rest of you, to not stop just because you doze off. Yeah, don't, don't give up just because you doze off. It's a natural, you know, we start at 1 o'clock, uh, chanting, then one fifteen. you know, the whole point of the, the practice of chanting, it quiets, the, turns the mind. So the mind is already quieted. Then after that, at, over here, we don't even switch off the light. Some places, they even switch off the lights. Yeah, then aircon, carpet, and now this is already upgraded carpet. Last time was was harder. Now it's very nice and soft, you know. After a few years, not so soft, but still quite soft. Then, aircon, then Sifu's voice, very calming, <laughs> breathing in, breathing out, then breathing in, then breathing out. <laughs> uh, so, it's understandable that we would doze off. So, uh, the key thing is actually uh, the, to be done before you doze off. <clears throat> so, um, from wakefulness to this, there's a precursor stage where you're not totally drowsy also. But physically, uh, in terms of the body temperature, the sensation, the breathing, there are subtle changes that start to kick in. Yeah. This, I would, this is what I would call the precursor states to drowsiness. Not even drowsiness, not to mention full head-on dozing off. Yeah? So before dozing off, there's some drowsiness. And then in between, there's some drowsy doze off, drowsy doze off. And then after that, if you, you still cannot zi ba, then full blown. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there's sometimes some people who will doze off and you really try and you really straighten and then next thing you know, you are in la-la land also. Uh, so 
Uh, these are different stages. But key thing is before that, there's a there's some precursor changes. Yeah, precursor means prior to that state, there are some changes already. Uh, that that uh, that precedes yeah precedes the drowsiness. So the key thing is to be able to catch that. Yes. So throughout the whole process, to be mindful not just of the breath, but how the body is feeling, yeah, the state of the mind, the state of the body, uh, which is the whole point of the practice. And that's why starting to become drowsy or even falling asleep or being dozing off, um, the sleeping part is not the practice. But being aware of dozing off is part of the practice. And then once you're aware, to put in effort, to, to use different techniques to actually bring yourself away from that state, uh, that is part of the practice. <clears throat> you ask, I see whether we, we can continue. Uh, during the meditation part, uh -huh. when you do the meditation, you reach a stage where you actually find that, like the day last week you said the sound came in, uh -huh. the little kids were making noise, yeah. and then the sound, uh -huh. and then you start to hear the sound of surrounding you, the mm. breathing, and everything. Okay, and I also start to see things like, so I know that it's called like feeling of mindful of what actually happened, and then don't clinch onto it, uh -huh. let it flow. After that, is that okay that you just don't bother, and just continue with the breathing? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Mm. In fact, I have mentioned in the sitting before that when you meditate and if there are thoughts internally or sound externally, um, it is just like when we are in the food court having lunch with our friend or dinner with our friends, right? And they are talking to us. But at the same time, while they are, we are having conversation over the meal, there are people around us talking also. Right, uh, we can hear bits and pieces, but because we are not paying attention, it's just sound. And if that sound disrupts us, we call it noise. It's actually still sound. And if we pay attention to it, then it becomes conversations. Yeah, we can understand it as conversation only when we are paying attention to it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, taking that as a parallel, so likewise when we are sitting, whether it's internal chatter, which is basically our mind thinking, or external sound, whether it's the aircon, the door closing, opening, uh, someone sneezing, uh, or the kids, you know, giggling, uh, all these are just sound. Yeah. It's up to us to pay attention to it or not. Yeah. Which brings us to today's topic, living with anger. <clears throat> ah. Uh, the R is part of the title that I give them. <laughs> it's not that they put in themselves. Huh? So, living with anger. How many of you have gotten angry before? Raise your hand. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without looking up, I know all of us should have raised our hand. Yeah. We are a very angry country. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, even small kids get angry. Yeah, uh, and, if, and in fact, nowadays, uh, I think even small kids get angry even easier. Yeah, even easier. If it, before I continue, can I just double check? The gentleman and the lady on the first row, have you introduced yourself? Uh? Haven't, uh? Ah, you haven't introduced, right? 
Yeah, he was just now sitting down there. Ha ha ha. Sifu forgot about me. <laughs> lai, 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 tell us your name. <clears throat> Mike, please. Mm. Oh, I almost, I almost forgot. Because he attended the heart trial last night. The button be below the mic, uh, at the end, press and hold. No, press and hold the button. Press and hold until you see the light come up. Uh, but don't press until it explodes. Good afternoon, uh, brothers and sisters in the Dharma. My name is Ricky and I'm here with my wife, Linda. Um, this is our first time into this auditorium actually. Ah. We have been downstairs at the library and the books and all this, but this is the first time here. Ah. But uh, Sifu and ourselves, we, we know each other because we attended Sufu's lesson in Singapore Buddhist Federation, a basic Buddhism class. Yeah. So this is the first time uh, I'm with this. Uh, Spiritual cultivation group. Ah. Hoping to learn more from Sufu and the brothers this year. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Welcome. Hey, your, let your wife speak. Like your wife wait for a while. <laughs> Tell us your name. Hi, good afternoon, Sufu. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is Linda. Ah. Thank you for asking. Mm. So, Ricky and Linda, welcome. <clears throat> So, is there anyone who might miss out? Yeah. I think all accounted for, huh? So, mm. so living with anger. Uh, as I said, even young kids, and perhaps even more so young kids these days. Yeah. Uh, so, today's topic, they are, they are, uh, I'm going to share with you all uh, how the Buddha... Um, what did the Buddha say about anger? Yeah. Um, and then, what he, uh, how he described uh, the way uh, anger affects us. Okay. And then I will also want to get you all to think about uh, a time where you have been angry, and to ask yourself to observe yourself, you know? uh, because if we just if we just listen to what the Buddha has said, but don't go and do a uh, introspection yeah, onto ourselves, then we can't get the full impact, the full benefit of the teachings. Um, and then later on, we'll perhaps <clears throat> look at the different approaches we have to deal with anger. Yeah. And I want you all to just think about it first. And then later, maybe if you are comfortable, to share what you do when you are angry. Uh, I'm not talking about some model answer, okay? So don't tell me, uh, according to uh, uh, dealing with the monkey mind, Venerable Topchun children said this. Uh, according to living with happiness, uh, the Dalai Lama said that we should do this. Uh, I mean, yeah, all this is good and fine. Uh, but I want you to share very frankly how you deal with anger. Uh, and uh, I'm not s suggesting that you must think of uh, a way that actually deals with it, but to really share what you currently do. Like for example, maybe when you are angry, you throw things. Yeah, and if you if, if that's what you do, I want you to tell us. Okay, if you don't feel comfortable, you can write on a piece of paper or you can text Sifu. Uh, I will have the phone number. Uh, <coughs> uh, open the direct line for you to show. Yeah. Uh, okay. So first things first. What did the Buddha say about anger? So what is anger? Anger is one of the defilements. So how many defilements are there? Root defilements. There are three. The first one. 
Yes, very good. Greed. And then the second one? Mm. So, second one is anger. Yeah. In some translation, we put hatred, yet in others, we have aversion. <clears throat> so, for the first one, sometimes we put greed, sometimes we have desire. And the third one, we have, what do you say just now? What do you say just now? Uh, ignorance. Yes. Yeah. Or also synonymous delusion. <clears throat> so these are the three root defilements. What we, in Chinese we call fan nao. Fan now. Um, and these are the three which is the Kenpen <coughs> Fan now. But in fact, the, in terms of defilements, there are a collection of six fundamental ones. These are the first three. So, Tan Chen Chi, then Man Yi Er Jian. <coughs> then we have uh, Conceit Man. We have doubt and we have wrong views. Not wrong views are wrong views are. Yeah. And these are the three fundamental ones that we usually deal with. <coughs> so um, a bit of background. Why is it translated as defilements? In Pali Sanskrit it's called kilesa. Kilesa. So for those who are new with us, you'll find that in the Buddhist teaching, there are a lot of terms which are not English. Yeah? And it's actually in Pali Sanskrit. And the reason is because the Buddha was not an, he was not an English-speaking monk. Yeah? Yeah. He didn't speak with a stiff upper lip. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't walking around drinking tea and wearing a bow hat. Yeah. He was an uh, we, we usually say that the Buddha was an Indian prince. Yeah? Uh, but in fact, he wasn't Indian. <gasps> do, you know, do you know that the Buddha wasn't Indian? Because in the Buddha's time, there was no India. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. The, the, the nation, the country that we call India existed uh, post uh, the British period, yeah, about maybe 100 over 200 years. Now, it doesn't mean that the continent didn't exist. The, the Indus continent, yeah, the Indus river and Indus valley, all that existed. Yeah. It's the one country as India that didn't exist <clears throat> in the Buddha's time. In the Buddha's time, from various sutra, and other records outside of Buddhism, we know that there were 16 different states. Sometimes at peace, sometimes at war. Yeah, 16 different states. The Buddha belonged to this clan called the Sakyan clan. Yeah? He was of the warrior caste and the, uh, <coughs> his, his, uh, his hometown in a way is in the northern India part. Yeah? His mother is from another kingdom, yeah, um, and so when he was born, he was his mother was actually uh, taking a journey back to his her hometown, yeah, and passed by Lumbini, and in the park he, she rested and then gave birth to him. Uh, so the Buddha, first of all, uh, was not an Englishman, not Chinese also. Uh, there are some people who actually think that Buddha is Chinese. No, oh, Sufu. You look at the Buddha statue, look Chinese, I wear Chinese gown. <laughs> yeah. In fact, in Thailand, some Thais actually think that the Buddha is Thai. Yeah. And the reason, you do know the reason? The reason is because if you go to Thailand, there is actually a park called Lumbini Park. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, locations that is found in India that has an equivalent location in Thailand. So, but what happened was, 
way back, some of the Thai kings, they were, well, Buddhists. A lot of Thai kings are Buddhists. And so some of them were so ardent Buddhists that they named some parks and some location after the locations in India that were significant. In that first generation, everything is fine. Because they know that that place used to be called maybe Jalan Satu or what. Then later, the king changed it to Lumbini Park. <laughs> yeah, that place last time, Tiong Baru, then now changed it to <laughs> Rajkia or something. Yeah. So the first generation, everybody know. But after a few generations, they grow up knowing that that place is Lumbini Park. Then they read the Sutta. Oh, Buddha was born in Lumbini. Oh, Buddha born there. So Buddha, Thai prince. <laughs> <clears throat> Then there are those who argue online that Buddha was actually not an Indian priest, he was a Nepalese prince. Why? Because uh, Lumbini is now in the northern part in Nepal. Yeah. So, but in the Buddha's time, there's no Nepal also actually. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the kingdom can be somewhat traced all the way back, more or less, but there's too much changes to call that Nepal also. Uh, what we know is that he was born in the Indian continent somewhere in the north. Yeah. Um, so he, as much as he, uh, he wasn't an, uh, really an Indian Indian prince like we call Indian today, nor Nepalese, he definitely didn't speak English or Mandarin. Yeah. You cannot speak Chinese actually, because Chinese is the written script. Yeah. Mandarin is the spoken Huayu. Yeah. So, that's why we have terms like kilesa. Kilesa. But the word kilesa, when translated, um, sometimes translated as defilements, sometimes translated as affliction. So the translation fun now <clears throat> is actually closer to affliction because it means that it causes your mind to become afflicted, agitated. Yeah, it causes your mind to be unsettled. So then how about the term defilements? Uh, in the Chinese tradition, we have another translation for fan now, which is ran wu. Uh, ran wu. Ran wu, which means taint, dirt, yeah, defilement. That which can um, dirty your mind, cause it to be impure, uh, cause it to be impure. So, <clears throat> but in what way can these things cause it to be impure? Uh, so, when the mind is pristine, is pure, it is free of agitation. It is free of these unwholesome states. Yeah? It will not cause you to uh, act unwholesomely. Yeah? So, uh, from all this, <coughs> we can perhaps have a better idea of what it means to be, to have defilements or to have afflictions. Because if you think about it, here we have one, two, three. Only three, only three, you know. Yeah? Today, when we talk about emotions, oh, there's a lot of different emotions, you know. And within each emotion, there's a lot of subcategory. In fact, today we even have a program called Anger Management. Ah, yeah. Nowadays we have something called Anger Management. Buddha's time, no such thing as Anger Management. Yeah? Uh, but it was about managing your mind, yeah? learning about your mind. If you want to manage your mind, you need to know your mind. If you want to know anger, you need to, are you going to manage anger? You need to first know what anger is. Yeah? So, First thing, <coughs> anger is part of defilements, but defilements are varied. Secondly, of the three root defilements, these three root defilements are just three, three classification. But it's not just three things. There are a whole range of spectrum of different uh, negative emotions, which are or, or, or mental states that are actually under these three. So take for example, um, the first one, greed and desire. Yeah? How many of you think that you are greedy? 
Don't, don't, oh, okay, okay, raise your hand. <laughs> yeah. But how many of you really feel that you are greedy? Huh? Suddenly, no, no more. Yes. Now, then, if I ask you, um, you know, there are a lot of this, uh, this debate about how much uh, a CEO should be paid. In US, in US, not Singapore, okay? Don't talk about Singapore. In US, there are a lot of debate about how much a CEO should be paid compared to the lowest uh, paid staff in the company. Yeah, they, and they did a tabulation. Over the past 50 years, post World War II, past 50 to 70 years, um, the, the margin between the CEO, who is the highest paid person in the company, versus the lowest paid could be a road sweeper, could be a clerk or something. Yeah? It used to be maybe a few hundred times. Until today, it's a, a few thousand times, up to maybe even more. Yeah? Because if you consider some CEOs are paid a few, bil like a few hundred million, yeah? compared to the wage earner, per year, maybe 20k, 30k. Yeah? So the, the, the margin has increased a lot. Most of us would agree that maybe that can qualify as greed. Yeah? Would you agree that as greed? Say yes. I mean, we need to move on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you don't think that that is greed. Yeah? Maybe because you are one of them who get that few million dollars. <laughs> I'm very happy for you. <clears throat> yeah, the donation box is behind me. <laughs> yeah, but the key thing is this. Um, easy for us to look at individuals like this where they earn a lot to think that that is greed uh, but what about when you go to let's say the the food court yeah and you 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 ask for one more serving of condiment yeah or maybe maybe you like certain certain food and then you ask for more of it just a bit more yeah is that considered greed uh, think about it first. Huh? Uh, is that considered greed? Uh, because in comparison, we are more likely to think that if we have to choose one, then the CEO is greedy, not, not, not someone who asks for a bit more chili. Yeah? Uh, the banker, those bankers who, who collapse the whole, uh, who, who, who do the, what I call that, trading, you know, yeah? who sell bad, bad debts, you know, uh, those are greedy, mm, greedy. No, this is not greedy. But in fact, in a Buddhist teaching, all this fall under the spec the umbrella of greed. Uh, it's a matter of intensity. Uh, it's a matter of intensity. Uh, what about anger? Uh, what about anger? Would you say that a person who who kills another person, okay, yeah, in rage? would be considered someone who is angry. Yeah? Then what about when you are doing meditation and then uh, and then let's say the kid ah, ah, mama, mama <laughs> yeah? and then you <laughs> maybe uh, uh, then when you then the mother turn back <laughs> 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 yeah. Would that be considered anger? Yeah. Uh, then if you compare the two, someone who wow, gets so upset, yeah, how about those in the highway road rage? Is that anger? Uh, that's anger. Then compared to when which one is more anger? Uh, of course road rage we say that's more apparent anger. Yeah. So there are anger which is more apparent than others, more intense yeah, than others. But sometimes it's not just about intensity, sometimes it's how prolonged it is. Yeah, how prolonged it is. When you nurse a very deep anger, that it becomes hatred, yeah, you hold a grudge. Yeah, so there's a whole spectrum. So don't be caught up with just the term. Yeah? Oh, today's topic is about anger. I, I hold a grudge, but not under this. <laughs> I'm safe. <laughs> Ah, no. It's a whole spectrum. Likewise for ignorance and delusion. 
in the Heart Sutra, I always share with you all, what is delusion, what is ignorance. Ignorance in Chinese is wu ming, delusion is chi, yu chi. So what is the meaning of these two? Very simple. Yeah? If you know Hokkien, it's very simple. Ignorance is kwa betyo. Delusion is kwa sala. <coughs> yeah. So kwa betyo ka kwa sala. So ignorance, wu ming, you cannot see. You, you don't see the truth. Delusion, you see wrongly. And you still insist you are correct. Yeah, ah, that is delusion. Very, very simple. Yeah, but it's not just just these two terms. There are many. There's a whole broad spectrum as well. Yeah, whole broad spectrum. And the consequence of ignorance, delusion, actually, the the next three conceit, doubt, and wrong views are all linked to ignorance and delusion. Different levels, different degrees. Oh. today we're going to focus on anger. Mm. Oh, anger. So, uh, but before we jump into that, there's also another part which is how defilements, there are different stages of the defilements also. Defilements can be latent, it can be active, yeah? and then when they are active, they can, have, uh, they can be present but not really active, active, but they can also be very active where you are going to act on it. So the first level is the potential. Yeah? In Buddhism, we call this potential the seed, uh, defilement seed. So it is, uh, the term used is sui mian, <coughs> yeah, sui mian zongzi. So uh, describing this potential as, as though it's like a person sleeping. Uh, when we are sleeping, when a person is sleeping, is the person doing anything? No. But the, pot the person, while not doing something now, has the potential to do something. Uh, as to what? Uh, I don't tell you. <laughs> Depending on the condition. So when the conditions are right, the person awake, uh, then the person can do something. Uh, can start to plan, start to think, and all kinds of things. So while... if here, we're, we're not talking about you literally sleeping. It's a metaphor. Uh, so, the potential in us to be angry, yeah, that means we, sometimes we are actively angry, sometimes not actively angry. Uh, like for example, now in this room, are you angry? Say no. No, okay. Yes? Huh? I heard yes. No? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, today, during this period, you are not angry. Uh, but in us, we have the seeds. But why do we say that as a seed? Sifu, show me the seed. Where, where, where? <laughs> uh, cannot find the seed or cannot see the seed. So, it is a potential. Why? Because if there is totally no potential in you, then we say, no matter what happens outside, you will not be angry. So, for example, this, uh, this, 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 what is this? This is a cover for the mark. Okay? So, this has no mind. So, because it has no mind, it has no wholesome, unwholesome, no defilement or the seed of the defilement. So, now it's not angry. <laughs> of course, it's quite silly. How can a mark be ang angry, right? Uh, but no matter what you do to it, it will not be angry. The cushion that you are sitting on doesn't have mood. Yeah? So today you sit, it's like that. Tomorrow you sit, still like that. Okay, maybe not like that, like it's flatter. But it's, it won't become angry. Yeah? Uh, so inanimate things don't have the potential for wholesome or unwholesome, purity or impurity. We, human beings, sentient beings, we have the potential yeah, because of our mind, we have the potential for good and evil, wholesome and unwholesome. This, this ability to do things and so on, when we act in a certain way, it plants certain seeds. And that seed remains latent in us. Uh, latent in us. So, as a result, 
Although sometimes maybe we are not angry, yeah, and maybe for a period of time we are not angry, ah, we have to be careful. Why? Because anger as a defilement can be in a dormant form. What it means is, sometimes as we learn the Dharma and we practice, then we seem like, hey, everything seems to be quite okay. Yeah? Uh, why must we be careful? Because when everything seems to be quite okay, then we tend to be complacent. Uh, because we think everything is okay, then our guts is down. Then what happened? Ah, when our guts is down, then easy for our seeds to surface. Then today happy, today tomorrow happy, happy, happy. Then too happy, then sing chai le ho. <laughs> then ah la 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 la. Then suddenly, ah, something happened. Then we, <laughs> ah. then from dormant it become present, yeah, or manifest, yeah. Manifest is active, but I want to differentiate between arising yeah, versus the next stage. <clears throat> so from dormant, when there are suitable conditions, and if we are complacent. Uh, but actually, let me make it more concrete. When we are complacent, what happens? We are not mindful. We are not mindful, not aware of our body, speech and mind. We tend to, when we are complacent, we tend to think that everything is under control. Yeah, and then don't care really. Uh, then we, we so we do as we please. Yeah, uh, then from dormant it can become manifest. That means it appears. But when anger arises, it manifests. Still, still, we, we say that, well, as unenlightened beings, that's normal, huh? Ah, but the next part is even more crucial. Become active. So what is the distinction between manifest and active? It means that when it has arisen, you can say that manifest is active, but the third stage is when you act on the anger. Anger arises and then you allow it to germinate, you allow it to accumulate yeah, actively. And then finally you decide, you are so angry, wow, you must do something. You must say something, you must do something, you must plan. Wow. That's active form of the defilements. Uh, you want to, you seek the, the unhappiness of somebody. You want that person to... Huh, you watch out. <laughs> uh, we, we start to have this arising. <clears throat> uh, so this is what we can see from various texts uh, describing uh, the, the, our mind, describing the defilements at different stages. Yeah? Uh, but this is not just a theoretical teaching. Huh? You can actually observe it yourself. So I want you all to just very quickly do one simple exercise. Uh, try to recall uh, a moment in the past uh, where you are angry. It can be a long time ago, it can be recent, yeah, but I need you to uh, choose one instance where you are clearly angry. Yeah, don't don't choose some which is like vague, vague one. Uh. Uh, choose one where you're clearly upset. Uh, can so uh, yes. So feel free to 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 use any example. Yeah, key thing is you must be clear. Is anger. Okay, uh, got it. Got it. Okay, so. Um, I want you to ask a few questions. So, um, before you got angry that day, uh, did you know that you can get angry? 
Sometimes it depends. Huh? Sometimes you know that you will be getting angry. Sometimes you know that you can potentially get angry. Sometimes you thought that such things will never get you angry again. But then you will be surprised. Huh? When there are the right conditions, you can still be angry. <coughs> so, um, question. When you were angry that day, how did you feel besides anger? Yeah. Was it a good feeling or is it a bad feeling? Uh, you feel bad. Yeah. Uh, you do, do you did you feel nice or do you not feel nice? <laughs> oh, so far I felt very good. <laughs> I was really upset at day and I was smiling to myself. Wow, amazing. <laughs> yeah. We're probably not happy. Yeah. Well, kind of makes sense, right? You cannot be angry and happy at the same time. Yeah. So this is one of the things that the Buddha highlighted in his teaching. That opposing mental states cannot coexist at the same time. They overwrite each other. Yeah. They, they, they collide with each other. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> the other thing is, uh, when we are angry, what does it do? What did it do to your body? Just now we talk about mind, then now we talk about body. What did, do you remember what it did to your body? We start to feel warm. Okay. Hang on, let me write down as much as I can recall. Not nice, not good, not happy, and physically feel warm. What else? We feel tension. Did I hear Shiva? Shiva? Or trembling? Tremble? Trembling? Oh, that's quite intense already. Huh? <laughs> But if you, if you have a chance to observe, actually any time we're angry, uh, we experience almost all of this, you know. It's a matter of intensity. And sometimes because we are so caught up with venting our anger, we are not aware of what is happening to us. Mm. What else? Any, anything else physically? Your heart beat, huh? Uh, so... Oh, tearing already. <laughs> ah, so fast. Ah. <laughs> ah, must fight first, ma. cannot cry. One. Ah, you start crying. Habis. <laughs> ah, feel warm. And heart beat. Heart beating. Oh, ah, this one is bringing the medical. Yes, high adrenaline. So tearing. So, tearing, so adrenaline, adrenaline, anything else? So, we have, uh, <clears throat> so this is mind, this is body, physical, and then we have behavior. Uh, loud voice. Then aggressive. Oh, this is becoming very fruitful. <laughs> aggressive, double S or single S? Uh? Double, double S. Double S, uh, okay. So loud voice. Uh, so increase in the tone, yeah? Aggress aggressive. What else? Maybe bang table? Uh huh? Start cursing, wow. <laughs> ah, very good. So we start cursing also. Cursing. Huh? Bang the keyboard. Bang the keyboard. Ah, aggression. So bang, bang, uh, table, keyboard, phone, anything that you happen to come to in touch with. 
bang the door, yeah, bang the steering wheel, slam the door. Slam the door. Yes. Ah, hang on. Come again. Say what? Say bad words. Say bad. You are. Oh, yo. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> oh, say bad words. Huh? How can I bad? Oh, don't say, don't say. <coughs> mm. So, what else? Someone mentioned about leave the room. Huh? Huh? Leave the room. Oh, leave the room. Uh, so, leave the room. Okay, this is what we would sometimes do. So, we just tom up. Lah. Do you, do you kind of like, all right, guys, I'm going to just take five and to the do. See you guys later. Then you just, da, 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 da. you know, uh, you just <laughs> then, <laughs> slam the door. Yeah. Then, too bad, the door is the auto door. You cannot slam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you slam, then the thing. <laughs> So we leave the, we storm off. Yes. Yeah. What else do we do? Can't think clearly. Ah, can't think clearly. Okay, let me write below. Number 10. Cannot think clearly. You notice when we talk about emptiness, don't know, leh. <laughs> talk about anger, wow. <laughs> yeah. Anger master, oh. very good, very good. Uh, anything else? When we are upset, when we are angry, our heart pulsate, beep, 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 beep. Yes. Cannot concentrate. Cannot concentrate, ah, good point. Cannot think clearly, cannot concentrate. Mm, cannot concentrate. <clears throat> what else? Ah, so we we also stop listening to the other party. Uh, so this that's why today's topic follows up with the last week's topic. Uh, how to quarrel effectively. <coughs> so did you all go and try? <laughs> yeah. Actually, if you tried all the things we discussed last week you probably will not quarrel. Yeah. Or at least you will not do what people would consider as quarrel. Yeah. You will, it doesn't mean that by not quarreling, then you must back off and you must be a walkover. But it means that you don't engage in that kind of unfruitful uh, exchanges. Yeah. Where we start cursing and say bad words. Yeah. Uh, Hey, mm. eh? did I miss out something? Cannot concentrate. Uh, is there a number 12? Ah, don't listen, sorry. I, I was going to write and then I missed it out. Uh, not listen to the others. Okay. I think this should be enough. Huh? <coughs> yeah. So the Buddha described all this as self-destructive behavior. So he said, a person who holds on to anger is like a person who is holding on to hot coal. Yeah. You know burning coal? Yeah. You take the coal and then you, you heat it up until it's red burning hot and then you hold on to that. Yeah. Can you imagine? The description is very visceral. Very short, very concise, but very visceral. Imagine yourself picking up a hot coal that has been heated up, so it's burning red, hot, and then you hold on to that. Uh, that is the same as holding on to anger. 
Anger in so many ways harm us. I used to think, and in fact, many times in talks or books, we learn about or defilements and we learn about abandoning it. Yeah? Um, and as a result, many times, when people come to Buddhism, uh, part of the reason for coming to Buddhism is you want to be happy. And because anger and happiness is opposing, so we want to remove hap uh, anger, not happiness. <laughs> remove anger. Yeah? But in the process, sometimes we end up not really understanding anger. More importantly, not understanding what it does to us. If we look at this list, if we look at this list, uh, that is auto by this is auto by YouTube uh, not not my problem uh. <laughs> <coughs> sidetrack uh. there was once I went to this center to give a talk then I brought my thumb drive they give me a laptop and then a happy gift talk, talk 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 then it went to screensaver mode I talk 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 then uh, years later someone told me that Sufu there was one time when you were giving a talk the screen server is all uh, swimming trunk ladies. Sorry? Did I have anger? Not, not really. I was like, ah, huh? what? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, what did you all tell me? <laughs> but can't blame them lah, because once I talk, cannot stop. So <laughs> they have no chance to tell me. Yeah, so if you look at this whole list, right, we have some of it which is to do with the mind, yeah, the mental state yeah, over here. And then we have some physical. Yeah. Uh, then the rest, some of it is behavior. And then some of it is the way our, in terms of our behavior of the mind. Huh? Now, um, if we look at all that, all this, they are all different in a way, but they are all common as well. Common in what way? Uh, all this uh, put us in a state where do you think you feel more in control or less in control? Less in control, isn't it? Yeah, when you, uh, including even the first two, when you don't feel so nice, don't feel good, don't feel happy. If you are in control, then you can just snap out. And this is part of what we are trying to do. But when you are in this state called anger, you are not in control. You can't help it, but don't feel good. You can't help it, but don't feel happy. Sometimes I joke in class about whether anybody wake up you know, in the morning and then plan to be unhappy, plan to be angry, plan to get in an argument. Sometimes we do, you know. Sometimes we have been planning the whole weekend for Monday to come. <laughs> but only because when something is not going according to our wishes. If things are going well, everything going to your wishes, your health is good, your work is, is superb, your boss like you, your, your car can are all cooperative with you, your husband and wife, everything good. Yeah. Why would you plan to be angry? Yeah. So, if you go down the list, uh, feeling warm, heart beating, tension and so on, likewise, when you are in that state, it feels like you can't help it. Yeah. It feels that way. Yeah. Including where we start to raise our voice, curse and say bad words. <coughs> it's okay. Let's give him a round of applause. We are clapping not to encourage you to use bad words. I'm asking them to give you a round of applause. Uh, in view of your candidness, yeah, uh, in sharing so openly, okay, uh, it, don't get it wrong, uh, 
Oh, Sư Phụ, clap! Uh. <laughs> I should use more bad words. More th- uh, no, uh, it's not for that. And then aggression. All this, including stomping off and not being able to think clearly. Yeah? Not being able to concentrate or listen to others. If we have a choice, we want to do it. Yeah? But when we are in a state of anger, seems like we are out of control. But wait. In fact, um, we can regain that control. Yeah. So the first thing we need to know is that, yes, typically when we are angry, a collection of this happen. Yeah. We don't always do all, all 12 of them, yeah? but a combination of them. And it does feel like we lose control. Yeah. So first thing is, do, you want, do we want control? Say yes. Yeah, we want control, but usually we want control after the fact. Yeah. We wish that we had control. Yeah. So second thing to know is that since we want control, are we able to have control? Yes, we can have control. But we need a, a method. Yeah, so first things first, um, <clears throat> early on there was a question about drowsiness and I mentioned about the precursor state that means the states that precede drowsiness now it may seem quite trivial and almost like well we shouldn't we shouldn't be drowsy at the first place yes we shouldn't be drowsy at the first place likewise we shouldn't be angry we shouldn't be greedy we shouldn't be ignorant at the first place but we sometimes do so instead of beating yourself over it, know that yes, sometimes it happens. The next best thing we can do, next best thing is very important. Next best thing we can do is to observe the precursor states of all those uh, conditions, yeah, or or in this case defilements that we don't want. So in this case, anger. Uh, prior to us having full-blown anger, actually our bodies start to be warm and so on. But this is actually very um, gross. Okay, So I'm going to highlight a few things that we can observe for ourselves. Number one is the physical body. Yeah. All these changes, this is from you. Uh. So my point is that we, we all may experience it slightly differently. So don't, don't, don't get caught with these words also. Oh, but my heart didn't beat so fast. Leh. When I get angry, my heart stopped beating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. For some people, you may even feel short of breath. Yeah. Different, different. So we all feel differently. So don't get caught up with it. Key thing is for you to know your, your pattern. Uh, your pattern, your own pattern. Don't care about other people's pattern. Uh, you must know your own pattern. And it's the pattern that precedes anger. But I will tell you this, this, this is the easy part. In fact, before our physical body changes, prior to that, there's actually a preceding mental process that happens. And for most people, it is a cyclical, discursive pattern. Yet another pattern, which is purely in the mind. Now, I want you to now relate to your own encounter of anger to the point where if you can like sort of put it like as though it's a, you know, your DVD, uh, you can just scroll back and scroll forward to the point where it's full blown, bang table, uh, uh, shout already, uh, bad words, uh, all those things, okay? And then pause, okay? Don't get caught up with it. Pause there. Can you, are you able to do that? Pause there. Now I want you to rewind a few milliseconds, a few seconds, yeah, to the point where you have your first, uh, that initial displeasure arising. Yeah, got it? Now, from that displeasure to that full blown outburst, sometimes it's just a matter of seconds. Sometimes it's a matter of minutes. Yeah, and in between this period, there's a gradual build up of that boil, that heartbeat, and so on. 
Now I want you to then, if you can, yeah, recall, remember uh, this is supposed to be a recollection to your best ability. If you can't, it's okay. But try to recall. Don't try to imagine, okay? <laughs> this is not imagination. Uh. Uh, otherwise, it becomes just, you know, watching a movie. Other people's movie, not your own. So try to recall. If you rewind past that initial point of displeasure, that means you are not officially having any displeasure yet. Yeah. Now this is the part where if you... I want you to go and observe. Were you, was your mind calm, as a, calm and cool as a lake yeah. prior to that initial outburst of displeasure? Yeah. That period is probably not calm and serene. Yeah. Show of hands, how many of you are able to follow me up to this point? Okay. For those who can follow, this duration, <coughs> would you, would you um, say that there's a lot of thinking happening? Yes. Yeah? Um, and of course, that thinking is directly or indirectly linked to what we think is causing our anger. Yeah? That prior state. Yeah? Is this, this cyclical part that is kicking in? Yeah? Sometimes this gets interrupted, then we never get angry. Sometimes it go, 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 but we manage to siang <laughs> tong. Uh, we managed to sort of like unravel it and like, yeah. Unraveling doesn't mean that we figure out that they are correct. Uh, this one key thing, uh, this unraveling part don't always mean that, oh, we figure out that actually they are right, we are wrong. No, no. No. Sometimes it is. And of course, if that is the case, then many times we don't have any reason to get upset. Yeah. Maybe we realize it's our mistake and they haven't figured out. Oh, Mason, Mason, never mind, never mind. <laughs> yeah. But I want to highlight another part which is sometimes the unraveling can diffuse our anger before it goes full blown. Not because of that, but because occasionally we have that presence of mind to, to know that anger doesn't improve the current situation. As, as simple as that, you know. As simple as that. It's to ask ourselves this question. As we are going through this, to ask you to just say, no, don't get into this. Yes, ideally don't get into it. But if you get into it, really how? And then do the next best thing. Ask yourself this simple question. Does anger improve or deprove or don't change the situation? Whatever you do, you must improve your situation, ma. If it doesn't change, then you lose gang or so. Correct or not? Yeah. And that's why when you are driving and you are lost, right, best thing is find a, a safe place, stop there. Don't continue moving. Yeah. Some people, no, no, just continue and see what happens. Yeah, you might just be moving further away from your destination. So come back here, come back again. Um, this discursive process yeah, um, is not always a contigu contiguous uh, block. That means it's not always one chunk. It is sometimes built up over several days. And many times it is. That's why it has such momentum. That when, it, when you reach that final stage, you feel like you have no choice. You will really... Yeah. And it is because when it has started building up, we are either not aware or we didn't attend to it in a way to help diffuse it. But because it's still nascent, it's still a small little shoot, small fire, don't, don't, don't really care about it. In fact, it feels quite nice, small fire. <laughs> That's next thing you know. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> Now, I want you to, if you can, rewind to the point where... Um, now, this part is a bit tricky. Uh, 
And if you cannot figure this part out, it's okay. So this whole block of, uh, of uh, discursive thinking, the kind of almost seemingly uncontrolled roundabout, uh, the Chinese we call it Suan Niu Jiao Jian, stuck in there. If you can rewind all the way to the point where more or less you can say that is the start of this train of thoughts, you'll find that it starts off not with any major sign of anger. Not necessarily with any major sign of anger, you know. Uh, and this is the tricky part because it starts off in a very benign way. Sometimes even in a seemingly wholesome way. Right and wrong. Right? Many times when we are upset, it's over right and wrong. Ma. It, there's nothing wrong with wanting right and wrong. Ma. Right? right? Wanting to right the wrong, rather. <laughs> Tibo? Tibo? Say yes. Huh? How many, how many times you go and argue with people knowing that you are wrong? I mean, sometimes people do that. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, how many times you get angry knowing that you are wrong? Uh, that's a bit different. To argue even though you are not, you, even though you know you are not quite right, yeah, maybe. But to know clearly that you are wrong and you are still angry, uh, maybe lesser. Yeah, and the key thing is, if we trace, if we now look at the whole sequence, right, from the explosion to the initial displeasure to this whole block, which again, I must highlight, may not, start, may not have started on that day. And many times it doesn't. Many times, maybe it's a few days, maybe a few weeks ago, it starts off as a, a very mild thing, you know, and then it leaves a seed in, in us. And because we didn't have a chance to fully develop it, develop the whole story, yeah, because maybe halfway through someone texts us and we forgot about it. But we have very good memory. It stays inside us. And then when we are free, when we're taking the bus, the train never come, and then the traffic light never turned green, then we are sitting there, ah, then, ah, we go through our checklist. Asing <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we, we go through our checklist, and then all the happy, unhappy, all, wow. Then we go through, then we, you know, it's like a writer, you know, we are a writer. We, we, write a bit more story here, then after that, right halfway, we write another other story, right here, right, right. Then until one of the story is full-blown, ready to be published. Ah, ready to be published, post online, sent to the bookshop already. Ah, then on that day, ta -da, So this part is very crucial. <clears throat> but how do we then deal with this part? There are many practices that actually deal with this part, yeah, but not necessarily so explicitly explained as we are doing today, including practices like chanting, including practices like meditation. Yeah, we all know, you know, we all quite clearly know, oh, meditation is good for deal with your anger, but how exactly does counting your breath deal with your anger? Yeah, first and foremost, <coughs> if you develop the habit of observing your breath, it can help you to use this to overcome the physical symptom. And if you can calm down your breath, your, your, your mood will come down also. But that is just the surface. Even more importantly, as you practice meditation, our ability to observe our mind becomes more sh becomes sharper becomes more acute, becomes more refined and sensitive. Not sensitive in the bad way, huh? uh, but in a subtler way. Uh, not the kind of, uh, a bit, you cannot, cannot uh, not that kind of sensitive. Actually, in Singapore, we use a lot of words in a very strange way that the rest of the world don't understand. <laughs> it's so sensitive. But actually, it's sensitive doesn't, have a, doesn't necessarily have a negative connotation. Yeah? Uh, our mind become more uh, sensitized. Maybe sensitized is a better expression. Uh, such that even way before the fateful day where we get angry, we are able to observe 
ah, this sequence, I've observed three times already. This sequence leads to this, and then uh, if this is not managed and resolved, then over the next few days, it will keep surfacing and, and then go into a discursive chain. And then when I encounter another thing, boom, this will trigger the, 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 the defilement, the anger, to go from dormant to manifest. Yeah. We haven't dealt with active. Today, we may not have time to deal with the active part. Yeah. But as they say, prevention is better than cure. Uh, so today's session just focus on the preventive part. If you can observe yourself, now but some of us don't meditate, right? Uh, how about do you do chanting? When you do chanting, you're actually not just su not supposed to just <coughs> Namo Amitabha, for Namo Amitabha. I mean not just chant with your mouth though. As you're chanting, you're supposed to be aware of the sound, aware of the words, yeah? as you are doing the chanting, anchor your mind on the words. Such that, when the mind drifts away, you, you immediately know. Yeah? Chanting is not just about, oh, I chant until my mind don't drift. Yes, that is one of the results. But in the process, you can actually be aware the moment that the mind flicker. When the mind just shift a bit, not, not full blow, no. And that's the thing. If you can do that, then it becomes another tool in your, your, your tool bag, in your kit. Yeah? And uh, it becomes a, a more natural part of you, uh, to be aware of it, your, the movement of your mind. Uh, usually we are aware of things outside. Yeah, how the stock exchange price go up and down, the price of HDB flat go up and down, the price of this go up and down. We're aware of all these things that is external, fine and good, you know, then you can get a, a good price, whatever. Yeah? But to be aware of our mind. Then, even when it has started to go in a certain pattern, uh, again, pattern recognition. When you observe a certain pattern in yourself, you know that, okay, it's yalla. If this continue, in due time, I'll get angry. I want to invite you all to experience this. We're going to get angry some point or another. But at least, we owe it to ourselves to try this approach, to observe this pattern. Because this pattern has been happening, you know. But we owe it to ourselves to observe using the techniques in Buddhism to observe this inclining of the mind. Even if in the end you didn't manage to stop, it's okay. The first step is not to be able to stop it, but at least see the inclination. Uh, if you see it, you, you get very excited. Yeah, you get very excited. And that will give you that, that strength to be able to overcome it more than anything. Many times we are unable to overcome anger because we don't even see it happening. How to overcome it? Many years back, I gave an example. It's like, I told a person, it's like a tree outside. If, if you have a garden, and somehow there are seeds that you accidentally throw inside, but you didn't know what seed you throw. Unmindfully, you just throw this seed, that seed. But if after planting the seed, throwing the seed, if you check, if you check the, the field only once a year, in one year, a lot of things can grow quite fast, you know. The durian tree in, my, in the pot, just a few weeks or months, it come out already. And the rest turned out to be jackfruit. <laughs> I thought it was all about durian. The rest turned out to be jackfruit. Now, compared to if you check every day, every day versus every week, the frequency is much higher. Yeah? But what it means is that every day if you check, oh, you can see some growth. And you can, through the leaves, you can see the feature. Ah, is this the right fruit and right tree you are going for? And that's why knowing the features of anger is important. Yeah? I've mentioned about how the precursor state
which is the discursive torts. I think this is S, discursive torts. <coughs> to, to know the feature, how it looks like, yeah, know, know your mind, know the feature, then you can catch it. Yeah. Uh, then, after that, uh, we can deal with it. Oh. Two things, I'll, last two things I want to highlight. One is, uh, next, next week there is Dharma Day, so we'll not be having the, the usual talk, uh, usual as you see. The following week when we come back, we'll continue with this and deal with the aftermath. Okay? Huh? Oh, following week we are having a break. <laughs> yeah. Because we have been having continuous run, uh, the Siapusa, they also need the break. Uh. Uh, so those who don't need break, uh, you can come here and then imagine we are here, then we just do chanting yourself. <laughs> <coughs> uh, but later, uh, when we do come back, uh, we will come back, if I don't die, uh, <laughs> then we will look at, okay, the, the later stages, what can we do? But I want to just leave one thing with you, which is, we don't have to act on the anger. Whatever emotions arise, we don't have to act on it. I cannot further, I cannot overemphasize this. I've sat down with so many individuals, um, not just angers, emotions. Now, I'm not against emotions. I'm not saying that you cannot live your life according to emotions. But so far, what I see is when people live their life, make their decisions based on, based on and solely on emotions, they, it tend to bring them to places where they don't quite want after that. So if you find that, but Sifu, I have always lived my life according to my impulse and emotions, and I'm exactly where I want to be. Congratulations. I'm okay. Uh, but for those, if you find that when you live your life in this way, it doesn't lead you to where you want to be. Instead, it leads you to where you don't want to be. Uh, then, I have a good news for you. You don't have to continue living your life this way. Uh, when we come back, we will look at this part. Okay. Second thing <clears throat> is, the, is that whatever we are doing, we have discussed today, and if you all go and try out, this does not... This does not yet deal with the arising of discursive thoughts. This is to deal with the discursive thought when it arises. Okay? So all this is classified under what I call the band it approach. Band it or work the mole approach. When it happened, whack it. The 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 uprooting approach, uh, that part you need to apply wisdom. Yeah, so that part is, so you have discursive thoughts, right? So what we are doing is, when this has arisen, then do something about it. Yeah, try to break out of that pattern. Okay, but in Buddhism, there's another part which is even more powerful, which is to uproot it, to remove the reason why this, this kind of discursive thoughts arise. Ah. So, what is the difference? The difference is, this approach that we are current that we have touched on today is very crucial for immediate action, for you to do something about your present state. But it's, it's short term. It doesn't uh, remove the cause of anger. Uh, when we come back, we'll look at the sec the last part. Yeah, that if anger has arisen, what to do with it? And then, <coughs> um, the, the before discursive thoughts part, which is how to look at situations such that you diffuse it before discursive thoughts leading to anger even arise. Uh, and if you succeed in unraveling that part, oh, you are quite close to enlightenment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, enlightened ones, totally uproot 
the, the roots of anger. Uh, they are not, it's not that wow, they go on arms round, they greet the mouth or what, then they, wow, this one, wow, big thing. Uh, don't say, don't say. Uh, it's not that they are like that. Uh, they totally remove the cause for frustration or for anger already. Uh, so that, that is the part that I will look at also. In the meantime, uh, do, this, do this practice. Okay? Yeah. Can? Come. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao. Yuan Da Zi Hui Zhe Ming Liao. Pu Yuan Zhi Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. Shi Shi Chang Xing Pu Sa Dao. Amitabha. Let me see. Uh,